When can you have sex after a microdiscectomy? Doctors want you to wait six weeks, but I can tell you from the forums that you guys just can't wait. You've just been in a lot of pain and you've experienced something very traumatic. It can lead to anxiety, depression, and even PTSD. And I feel like I let myself get to that point and I wish I had seen or talked to someone for mental health. Don't be ashamed to reach out for your mental health. Today, we are talking about microdiscectomies and the most common asked questions, some of the most common asked questions on the forums for before and after the procedure. Who am I? I am Christine. I am a herniated disc champion from 2019. And since then, I have made it my mission to come alongside people who may be experiencing the worst pain in your life right now to show you that there is hope and you will get through this. Bed Back and Beyond is my podcast, and I would like to invite you, if you have a recovery story from a serious neck or back injury that you would like to share, please reach out. I would love to show stories of positive recovery to show people that there is hope. Thank you again for joining, and let's get into these most common questions for a microdiscectomy. So first off, what is a microdiscectomy? A microdiscectomy is a minimally invasive procedure. It goes in using a small excision, and depending on the number of discs that you have herniated, it could be one to three inches. And it will go in and remove the disc material that has herniated out of the disc and is now in a body space that it doesn't belong. The goal of a microdiscectomy is to relieve the leg pain that comes from the pressure on the nerve. Leg pain, leg numbness, foot drop, and uh, symptoms like those. It's not meant for back pain, but some people have found relief after their microdiscectomy. The procedures that are the most beneficial are ones that were performed pretty quickly after the herniated disc happened. Unfortunately, the longer you leave your herniated disc, the more damage is done to your nerves. And the more damage that's done to your nerves, the longer it will take to heal from your surgery. Some people will wake up and say, I feel like a new person after their procedure. But other people will say, I still have symptoms months after their surgery. And that's because there was more healing that needed to take place. How do you choose which doctor to see? So a microdiscectomy can be performed by either an orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon. And if you ask a ton of people their opinion, you're going to get a ton of different answers. The truth is both doctors are completely capable of performing this procedure. You want to ask in your consultation, how many of these have you done? Are spinal surgeries a focus of your practice? You are in your right to ask any questions you want in your consult. And feel free to consult with several different doctors. You don't have to go with the very first doctor you consult with. You also want to go with, like, who do you vibe with? What personality style do you like in your doctor? Do you like a hand-holding doctor who has a pleasant bedside manner that feels like they're going to, you know, cradle you safely in their hands? Or do you like a no-nonsense doctor that's like, just get in, get it out, and get out of my practice? People like that. So it all depends on what you like in your doctor. Also, who makes you feel heard? Who is listening to you and answering your questions? And it just all comes down to who do you feel the most confident in? And also, I want to say, consider the office. Are they answering the phones? Are they giving the message to the doctor? Everything comes down to confidence in who you are most comfortable with. What is pain like after a microdiscectomy? There is pain after the surgery. There's no denying it. And I completely understand the fear of trading a pain you do know for a pain you don't know. But I will tell you that the pain from a microdiscectomy goes away in a couple of days and you're given prescriptions to help deal with that pain. So I went ahead and I uh, did a survey on the Reddit forum for microdiscectomy, asking people to compare their surgery pain to their herniated disc pain. So most people said their herniated disc pain was at a 10, while their excision pain was anywhere between a four and a six. That's a huge difference. There were a couple of people who said that their surgery pain was close to a 10, but again, that pain starts to go away within a couple of days. 
when can I sit or drive after the procedure? So for your first two weeks after your surgery, your doctor is most likely going to tell you no sitting longer than 10 minutes. You are going to do a lot of reclining, laying down, but also walking. Um, you can increase your sitting after two weeks, but it's all a comfort level. 10 minutes here and then maybe 12 minutes, and then maybe 15 minutes. And driving is the same. No driving for the first two weeks. And then you want to just incrementally increase how far you're driving based on how you are feeling. I found carrying a pillow and putting it behind my back for driving was a huge help. Let's talk about pooping. Everyone wants to know how do I poop or how do I wipe after a microdiscectomy, especially with the no bending, lifting, or twisting rules in place. First off, I want to say you are not in traction. Remember that. So while you can't do a full twist, you can actually do a little bit of movement. And if you practice, you might be surprised at how far you can actually reach behind you with a very little movement to your back. There is a wiping tool that is available on Amazon. I hated it. I couldn't figure it out. What would be a huge help for you is a bidet. Trust me. I know a lot of people are still like, oh, bidet, how terrible. But they're becoming more and more popular because they work really well. And they are they don't have to be fancy. You know, you can get the top of the line warming the water for you or just the easy to install bidets from Amazon. And thanks to websites like TaskRabbit and things like that, since you most likely can't be doing any installation yourself, you can hire somebody to come in and install the bidet for you. Trust me, you're not leaving with a soaked tush. They get you right where they're meant to get you and they make cleaning so much easier. But with anesthesia and pain meds, you will be constipated. So you want to make sure that you are eating foods that will help to soften your stool, which means high in fiber, things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kidney beans. Um, and you also want to take a stool softener. You may be given a prescription for one uh, from your surgeon, but also consider getting one for yourself from the pharmacy. You do not want to take something in such a way that's going to give you the runs, unfortunately, because you don't want to be um, pushing hard or anything like that. That can be uncomfortable for you. People find putting a seat riser on their toilet so helpful because you then you're not having to lower all the way down and you can get a seat riser with a bidet attachment. When can you have sex after a microdiscectomy? Doctors want you to wait six weeks, but I can tell you from the forums that you guys just can't wait. So let's talk about it. First off, let me say this. If you are adding any guilt or shame because you can't have sex with your partner right now, please stop. You need to be focused on your healing and your mental state and your emotions is a huge part of that. And if you are the partner of someone who is recovering from surgery, please don't make any jokes or innuendos or anything that will add to their guilt. Trust me, they know it and they are already feeling bad about it. But like I said, people just can't wait six weeks and I don't blame them. Sex is enjoyable, but it's also healthy. It makes you feel better. It's great for your emotions, you know, endorphins and things like that. So what should you do? First, I would say is have a plan in place. And unfortunately, that means no spur of the moment, romantic, uh, just diving right in sexual encounters. Have a plan. Are you the person on the bottom? Make sure that you have pillows under place to support your back. Uh, no movements that are moving your hip or bending your back. No strong thrusting. All of this stuff can actually lead to reherniation. Consider adding a toy or anything like that. So whatever you do, ha have that conversation with your partner. Be honest and listen well. Don't add to the guilt and shame. Another question on the forum is, did I reherniate? Reherniation is on everybody's mind after the surgery. And unfortunately, it can become an obsessive thought while you're lying there recovering. It's all that you can worry about sometimes. Reherniation is a risk of the procedure. Right now, it's reported about 10% of people will need a second surgery. 
But there are other things that can cause pain to make you think that you've re-herniated when you really haven't. One of those is post-surgery inflammation. That can hit you days, weeks, or even months after your procedure. Mine hit me about two and a half weeks after my surgery. And instead of calling the doctor right, right away, I, of course, worried about it, cried about it, and was taking Tylenol too much, waking myself up through the night just to take Tylenol. Finally, I called the doctor and he gave me a steroid dose pack and it took the pain away within two to three days. So give your doctor a chance if you're feeling this pain come up. Something else that can cause pain is scar tissue. Scar tissue can start to form about one to three months after your surgery. And this is where I think seeing a physical, physical therapist is huge. They can teach you nerve flossing and nerve gliding movements to make sure that the nerve isn't impeded and can have its full range of motion like it's supposed to. Not every doctor recommends physical therapy, and I don't know why. I would, I would hugely recommend it. It was a big, big help to me emotionally as well as physically. So how do we prepare for surgery? First off, I want to say make sure that you have support for yourself emotionally and physically. Be a part of a community. There's the Reddit microdisectomy Reddit. There's the there's a sciatica subreddit. There's on Facebook, herniated disc community, microdisectomy community. Join those. It's so helpful to have people that have experienced this or are going through it at the same time as you that can talk you through this. Make sure that you are addressing any mental health issues that you are dealing with during this. I would highly suggest for surgery doing things to occupy your mind to help keep that focus off of the woe is me. You want to look at this as a challenge you can overcome. And part of that is just occupying your mind. There's coloring book, puzzle books, TV shows, read some new books, try some different genres. What about learning something new? We'll try to learn a language. I suddenly, because of YouTube, got obsessed with makeup, but also learned a lot about tarantulas. <laughs> now I wish I had a tarantula. <laughs> well, let's talk about products that you'll need. Number one on everybody's list for a product is the grabber. This will help you get things that you've dropped on the floor, grab things that are out of reach. And you want to get two grabbers for when you drop the first grabber. Wedge pillows, you can get these on Amazon as well. These will help support your legs or also your back and to put you into a reclining position. This will help for sleeping. Other people prefer the, the full body pregnancy pillow. They find that a lot easier for sleeping because they can support their knees and kind of support their back off of, off of their bed so they're not laying on stitches. For your stitches, if your doctor hasn't given you waterproof bandages, you can get waterproof bandages on Amazon to just uh, cover your stitches for when you're showering. You're not allowed to bathe. And just so you know, you're going to be pretty weak. Your muscles are going to feel weak. So climbing in and out of the tub is going to be difficult. If you don't have somebody to help you do that, you might just want to consider sponge bathing. So get supplies for that. Another huge, huge recommendation, which I've already mentioned, is a bidet. Get the bidet for after surgery. You can find easy to install bidets on Amazon. It doesn't have to be top of the line heat and water. And because of websites like TaskRabbit, you can find people to pay to install the bidet for you because you're not going to be able to be crawling under your toilet right now. You can also get a toilet seat riser. And some of those do have a, a bidet attachment. Though That will make sitting and standing from the toilet so much easier. I didn't have a toilet seat riser, but I did have the medical handlebars next to the toilet. And that was a big help. Now, remember, you can't do any bending, lifting or twisting. So when it came to sitting on the toilet, I bought myself a bunch of nightgown dresses that just came to my knees. You can find those on Amazon. And even for men, they have uh, sleep shirts. I think they call them pajama shirts for men. And that way you're just comfortable with um, using the bathroom. Have your meals planned out. Prep ahead of time. Again, healthy meals that will be good for uh, getting things moving so you're not constipated. 
you are going to be doing a lot of walking after your surgery. So you want to make sure that your floor is clear, that you have a safe walking sp space. You want flat. Uh, if you have sidewalk outside of your home, that's, that's not broken up and safe to use. You'll be doing that. I did have a walker for a little bit of time. Um, not one that I was leaning over, but one that was tall enough that I didn't bend over. And I just used that until I felt strong enough to support myself. You, again, your muscles will feel pretty weak right after surgery. And that's it. I think those are the most important things to consider when uh, preparing for your surgery. This has been Bed, Back, and Beyond, a podcast developed for helping you get through one of the toughest times in your life. If you are someone who has recovered from a serious neck or back injury and you would like to share your positive recovery story to provide hope for other people, please reach out. I would love to interview you and include you in this podcast. Once again, I'm Christine and thank you so much for joining me. Good luck in your healing and you will get through this.